Well, this is a very interesting game that I have played in 2015 against Denis Hizmatullin during the Aeroflot Open. It's a very, very important Open in Moscow. And of course, in an Open, you, you want to play a little bit more risky than in a closed tournament because the prices are, if you get in the top three, normally the good prices are there. So you need to win games for that. And even if you play a strong player, this guy was 2650 already in this Russian Grandmaster, very strong Grandmaster. And even then, you still need to play a bit risky and uh, try to find opportunities. So, so that's why I chose this uh, opening that is coming now. Well, Knight f3, he played. He he plays different things. D4, C4, uh, D, uh, or Knight f3, basically. Even e4 sometimes. But uh, well, Knight f3 was more or less expected. He played d5, g3. It's a common setup. Knight f6, bishop g2, and bishop f5. And this is quite ambitious, actually, because you want to get now to a position with e6 and double up your king side with bishop e7 and castle, and then you'll decide when you move this pawn from, from c7 to c6 or even c5 at some point. He was a bit surprised by this move, but his next move is kind of obvious. He wants to get advantage that I developed my bishop so fast to f5. Normally people play here instead of bishop f5, something like c6. And this is much more solid, and then on the next moves you can choose where to put the bishop on f5 or g4. But with this bishop f5 move, of course now I'm a little bit weak on b7, and he, he tries to exploit this. So he played c4. And for this game I prepared this move e6, which is a quite an interesting move, but uh, of course it's a little bit risky, and this was the plan of the game. When you when you play c6 here, maybe it's not the best option, and also it's, uh, it wasn't the idea of this game, I wanted to play a bit risky, and if you have to capture this pawn with a c-pawn, you'll have to play a symmetrical, approximately symmetrical position, and then it will be harder to win, of course. So, and even here, queen b3, it looks a little bit annoying, this move, because the best way to defend this is playing queen b6, and then we'll, this will allow the change of queens any moment, and this wasn't the plan. Uh, I wanted to play risky, but actually, his Matulin is, is the kind of player, although he's playing a solid line here, he's the kind of player who plays risky himself, so maybe I didn't need to go for this approach for this game, but anyway, I didn't know him very much, so I decided to go for for this line. It's quite interesting, this e6. He started already to think a lot, and what I can say about my opening preparation was that uh, I knew there was lots of interesting moves, and here, of course, white uh, has a couple of interesting moves. He played cd5 first, but of course, he could have played castle immediately, or he could have played queen b3. And against any of those moves, black has a few moves, and my problem was that uh, I haven't decided exactly how to play against all of them. So basically I knew the ideas, I knew the plans, but I didn't knew the concrete moves uh, that I wanted to do. Against castle I'll play this, against queen b3 I'll play that, and uh, and this makes your life much easier. It's not enough to, to know the plans sometimes. Of course, it's, uh, it's good, but uh, it's going to be much easier if you know the, the concrete ideas against any, uh, any move. Of course, this is uh, the last step. First, you need to understand what's happening. Then you need to understand the ideas. And when, when you have all this, then you go for the for the memory thing. You, you, you try to memorize things, but don't try just to memorize and then something will happen and you'll, don't, you'll not understand anything. So this is the last step, memorizing exactly what you want to do. So here he, he went cd5, trying to force me to go ed5 and now to play queen b3. Why he did that? Well, one reason could be because after queen b3, one of the ideas is to play for example, knight c6, and he could be worried about, well, if cd5 now there is the option of taking with the queen on, on d5. This, he could have been worried, although queen b7 is super unclear, maybe it's even good for, maybe it's even good for, for, for white, but still, 
when you're in the game, you, you don't have a computer. You cannot be sure about things. So you can sometimes uh, try to play the most concrete idea, the not not giving the opponent a lot of options. Because here also, I will have the option to play knight bd7, giving the b7 pawn is interesting. And there are, yeah, so there are different ideas. So he wanted to make things a little easier for calculating. And he went for this move, cd5. Ed5, and he goes queen b3. And here... Uh, during my preparation, I realized that uh, there are three interesting moves, at least. Knight c6, and with the idea after queen b7 going uh, knight b4, and suddenly it's very unclear position, because black is threatening, of course, knight c2 check. But apart from that, rook b8 chasing the queen might provoke uh, the typical draw, after queen a7, rook, e8, rook a8, and this typical draw. So, knight c6 was one idea. Knight a6 is similar because it, it has the idea of jumping to b4, but as well to to c5. So, I mean, there was these two moves, and apart from this, there was knight bd7, which was the move I played. And basically, this took me already a lot of time to decide. And it's a pity, because all the three moves are similar in value, are quite interesting. None of them is especially good or bad. So, as I've said already, in, the, in these cases it's important to take a decision. Maybe it will not be the best decision, but uh, it's important to take a decision as soon as possible. If, there, if you know there are three, four moves that are interesting, try not to spend more than three, four minutes. It's, it's enough already, because the game then will get uh, much more complicated and then you might need this time and, and this game is a, is a perfect sample for this because later on the get go, went totally crazy and I, I have spent too much time on this little um, trying to make these little moves that are not so crucial for the game and well knight bd7 also well, allows kinds of moves. I mean, well, first of all, we need to realize that queen b7 is wrong, because now knight c5 is trapping the queen. The idea is after queen b5, c6, and there is no escape now. After queen c6 check, bishop d7, and there is no square, there is no squares for the queen. And after queen b4, there is knight d3 check, and uh, just the bishop takes the queen next move. So queen b7 is not possible, and the idea of black is if if uh, white simply castles, then knight c5 will be just good enough, because you attack the queen and you protect on b7, so basically this is very easy. But he went of course for the critical move, he, he's the kind of guy who is ready for, for a fight, so he went knight b4, and this move is important because it controls the c6 square apart from now, immediately attacking the bishop on, on f5. And now I had the option of uh, playing two moves. Once more, you, you'll see in this game, it happens all the time that there is no clear move. I've never had almost an only move. Uh, I've played only, very few only moves in this game. I had a lot of options, and this made me think too much. And then on move 25, I'll be in time travel already. And uh, for 15 moves, you have trouble. Here it was um, actually a... Uh, I had a choice to go bishop e4 like in the game or bishop g6 which was a perfectly good alternative. The idea is that giving d5 will not be especially bad because now you just take and you play with two bishops with a very nice compensation here. This, these bishops are very nice and the white queen in the center is, uh, has to go back and needs to lose Tempi. So it's very interesting position for black and maybe even easier to calculate because I've actually now after queen b7 I move like simply rook b8, queen a6, rook b6 and black has a very easy game. Black has a very easy game. We will try to play c5 maybe at some point. Queen a5 is probably the best move here by white, maybe the only move even. And there are lots of moves here which are interesting and makes the position 
quite easy to play for, for black. Well, let's say, for example, c5. And for pawn down, but we have so good development. His queen is on a5. And th I think just this uh, choice of opening from my opponent was just too risky. I think this is just too risky for, for white. Anyway, I went for the other line, bishop b4, but of course, again, this took me some time to realize that what I prefer or something. Both moves are perfectly playable. Okay, now I'm threatening on g2, and if castle, I can just simply go knight c5, and then it's very easy. So he goes for the critical line, he takes on e4. Now, I played knight c5, but even d4 was perfectly playable. Giving b7, but again, rook b8, queen a6, rook b6, and this is pawned down, but very, very interesting for, for black, actually. So, I'm not really sure why I wanted to play so risky, because I gave two pawns with this move, knight c5, and I was calculating a lot, because there there is a little bit of a forced sequence now, which uh, leads to a position which is very, very unclear for both, but for some reason I was incredibly attracted for the, to, the, to play this line. He goes now queen b5 check, it's the only idea, otherwise I'll just capture the bishop on e4 and oh, I'll be clearly better. So queen b5 check, c6 is the only move, and now the idea of knight d4 was to take on c6. So basically all these moves are forced and pretty easy. Knight c6, b6, queen c6, knight cd7 is the only move. Now I'm threatening the Bishop on e4, and apart from that, I'm threatening rook c8 and rook c1, because the queen on c6 is in danger. So bishop c2 is the only move, blocking the c-file. Rook c8 again is, again, only move. So all these moves are forced, but now we will reach a position that you you want to start to calculate, and you can never finish, because it's so complicated. So queen a4 here is the only move, and now rook c4. You cannot play slow these kind of positions with black. You are two pawns down, he has two bishops, one or two more moves, and he will be winning immediately. So you need to play with lots of energy. And of course, before doing this, I was calculating this position, and I liked this idea to play rook c4, which is the only idea. And I was calculating a lot, like uh, this queen b3, which is the which is the main move. And I was, well, well, it's very interesting position, it's very hard to calculate. I, I was trying to play queen c7 or queen c8, there are some subtleties about these moves. And here, for example, let's say queen c8, he has a number of interesting moves here. He has king d1 to protect the bishop, he has castle, he has knight c3, after d4 he'll just give the, the knight at some point, or I could go rook b4. I mean, like, this this tree of variations basically goes forever and makes it so difficult, and especially if you are calculating this from move 8 or something, or even earlier, this will just um, take all your energy and take all your time and everything. So it was not very practical unless I think this is winning, which I wasn't, I wasn't thinking this is winning. I, th I thought it's just unclear. So I had better options in, in the, from the practical point of view. It's true that they will, then we will not see such an interesting game, but probably I would have scored better than, than doing this. So, but I was thinking a lot about queen b3, even, I, it's move, now it's move 13, and I have spent a lot of time already. I, unfortunately, I don't know where is the score sheet, of course, but uh, I, I remember perfectly that I have spent lots of time because there was here, especially I was calculating from this position and this queen b3 just made me crazy. But he started to think a lot and he went for this move, b4, which is probably just a, a big mistake. I mean, it's not losing, but it's it's a very rare move. He probably didn't like the other lines, but on the other hand, he also spent a lot of time and it's a very critical position. But anyway, I felt a bit like an idiot because I have spent so much time on queen b3 and almost nothing on this. And now I had to restart everything and all the time that I was using before, it was just lost. And the problem is you also get tired, you don't know any, any lines, you need to start from zero. And uh, your, your time is running and uh, this, is a, this is a big problem actually. So 
you need to keep a good rhythm with the, with the moves, not to not to think too much sometimes. Yeah. So, well, he played before. His idea is basically that if you take with the rook on b4, then he can play queen a7, and, well, he might escape with a little bit of luck, but he might, he might escape and uh, his queen trying to go to e3 at some point or something. I mean, black's compensation is huge, really. Well, black's compensation is just huge. But it's also, once more, again, hard to calculate, because there are lots of moves that are interesting. Queen c7, bishop b4, rook b4. In the end, it looks like I, I think I've chosen the, the best move here, which is queen c7. But probably just randomly, because actually I think I even missed his next idea. I'm not sure I was expecting, for example, okay, knight c3 is probably just losing because of bishop b4, or even rook c3 looks even quite good. But uh, there are other moves, I don't know, like king d1, then knight e4, and the initiative is just huge. Rook f1 and bishop b4. This is just amazing. I'm castling on the short side, and his king is in the middle, and this is just terrible for white. But his idea was very interesting here. He played queen b3, and here I thought again a lot, and I chose the, the worst move. Like, well, not the worst of, uh, of the whole position, but of the normal options. I would consider here to play bishop b4, to play rook b4, to play rook c2, but playing rook c2, actually, which I did, was probably the worst option, and after a long time, and this is actually a little bit sad, because you, you spent a lot of time and you play the worst move, and of course you can never be sure which one is the best move, but at least try to, try to keep some... I don't know, just just some some rhythm. Yeah, this is I, I've mentioned already, and it's uh, it's a, it's just the truth. I mean, I'm not really sure. Well, I was worried about this line. We should be four knight a3 because now I'm forced to take on a3. He'll take bishop a3 back, and I'll win a piece with rook c2. But he'll just play castle, and this bishop on a3 is cutting my king, and rook c1 is coming, and I was a little worried with this position, but actually this was good enough. A, a move like king d8 and black should survive here. But of course during the game I, I didn't see this so easy. And that's why in the end I decided to just take rook c2. Which is probably wrong. I mean, it's about calculating and uh, sometimes you need to trust a little bit your intuition because there is no way you can, you can be sure but uh, there are there are possibilities that you can just, uh, I mean, you cannot rethink always, I mean, like a million times everything because then you're running out of time. At some point you need to trust yourself. Bishop B, uh, Rook B4 was the other interesting move, actually. After Queen E3 check, then just go something like King D8, and then you're playing Rook uh, uh, Bishop C5 and Rook E8, and it looks also super interesting for black. So I think I've chosen the, the worst move. But anyway, you'll see I'll have my chances in the end. I've lost only this game, first of all, because I wasn't inspired at all, but second, because uh, my time management was so bad. And, and this is the, here is the, the question. I, I had lots of possibilities, and I, would, I went just crazy with it. Okay, his idea is to play knight c3. Now my, my rook is trapped, and again, you can think forever, because it's not easy to decide whether I take on c1 or c3. I took on c3 in the end, but even, even for the computer it's hard to realize which one is better. So, if you have the feeling that uh, even the computer will not be able to solve this problem, it means that you'll also not be able. So, try to just make a decision. And in this case, it's pretty obvious that uh, it's just a difficult choice. And rook c1, rook c1, well, the problem is that it looks like d4 is winning a piece, but then after castle, dc3, rook c3, the initiative is just huge, and the, the, it looks so difficult to defend this position because my king is still in the center, and he has very 
aggressive ideas with rook fc1, rook c8, or rook e3, or combine rook c8 with queen e3, and it looks just very dangerous for, for black. So in the end I took on c3, which is more safe. He took queen c3. Here again, well, I think I have played the most logical move. I've played queen b7. You can agree that uh, normally when when you have no bishop of uh, some color, you put your queen on this kind of square. So I did that. I have the black squared bishop and I put my queen on b7. It it, it works like a bishop almost on, on this diagonal. And as well it protects the c8 square which is important right now. So it's a, it's a good move, I think. It's a logical one. He played castle, which is very logical. And now I had a couple of options. Well, bishops, bishop b4 is bad, because he will just give check, and then his rook will come to b1, and my queen will be pinned. But bishop b7 was perfectly playable. And just trying to castle. And now the pin with queen e3 is not that terrible. You can always just, for example, play something like knight g4 in the worst case. But I was more ambitious and I was trying to play queen d6, uh, bishop d6 and then castle, and the bishop will be more active on d6. But on the other hand, I allow now queen e3, and now I have a difficult decision because bishop e7, I will be pinned and it looks a little bit unpleasant already because he'll just play bishop b4, for, bishop d, b2, for example. And it looks not so good for black. This extra tempo is very important. The other move is king d8, but for practical reasons, in general, having the king in the center makes your position much more difficult to play. So I rejected that just because of this reason. And king f8 was my idea. Well, of course the king will be pretty safe on, on g8, especially by the moment, because it's not easy for, for white to reach the 8th rank. And the idea is to develop this rook through the h file, uh, or play h5, h4, and make this rook work, which is the last piece that we need to bring into the game. So king f8, bishop b2, h5 is very logical. Rook ac1, computer suggests a move like a4, but this is... This is just too complicated for us, probably. He wants to play b5 and play positional. But rook a c1 is, is a very decent move, and it's, uh, it's much more natural. He wants to reach the c8 square, and we'll see this in a moment. I've played h4. Now he played bishop d4. He wants to play now bishop c5 with the idea of forcing this change of these bishops and then take bc5 and create a pass pawn immediately, put some pressure immediately on my position. So that's why I played king g8, it's a very logical move. Of course, it's not very important to protect a7, because the, the king on g1 is weak, and this pawn right now in the middle game is not so important. Of course, in an end game, this pawn will be very important, but right now, there are tactical tricks as well that makes just the position almost losing for white immediately. Well, for example, hg, hg, now d4 and h1 is weak, and we are trying to play queen h1 mate or rook h1 mate, and the a7 bishop is hanging as well. And uh, he, if he plays with fg3, then we can go rook h2, this nice trick, and he cannot take the rook because of knight g4 check. So bishop a7 is, is just a bad move. He went a3, which is a logical move in a way, but it's not something that you are very worried about when you're black, because you're still organi organizing your pieces. And of course now my last piece comes into play with rook h6, and I was pretty happy about my position here. Of course I'm, I was sure that this is, a, this is a very unclear position, but on the other hand, I'll... I'll coordinate my pieces quite well already, my queen on b7 maybe in the future can come through d7 to h3 for example, 
my pieces are in the center, and my king is pretty safe, so it's, I have some little disadvantage of material, but this is not so important. And finally he goes rook c2 with the idea of doubling rooks and go rook c8 check and provoking to my king to go somewhere. Again, with black there are a few options, but this one looked uh, a bit simpler for me. I played knight f8. There were other options like uh, knight b6 or even rook g6. But knight f8 looks very natural to me. You just want to protect your king. And, uh, well, maybe the knight will come to e6 at some point. And also the queen on b7 is not doing much, so you can bring it through d7. Probably rook fc1 was a little better here, but he played queen f3, and it's moved 25 already, and we don't have much time. I, I think we had something like around... 7-8 minutes here, which is not so much because all the, almost all the pieces are on the board. It's a very complex position. It's very unbalanced position. It's not typical at all because he has some little material advantage, but on the other hand, his kink might be in trouble if I manage to coordinate my pieces, and the knights can be jumping anywhere and creating lots of problems. So this is a very, very unclear position, and it's very important to at least have two or three minutes per move. It's, it's, it's great to have such an amount of time. And this is a good rhythm to play in general. Play the opening f as fast as you can, the moves you can. Don't try to speculate too much. And, uh, for example, learn from Topalov. He, when, he, when he knows well his opening, he's not speculating. He's just playing it fast. He, 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 he just plays. I mean, he, the be if he knows the best move or the move he wants to play, he just plays it. It doesn't make uh, any show, any theater. So, queen f3, I went knight e6. And we are approaching a very tense moment already. He goes bishop e3. And here I have to take a, a decision. You don't want to play rook h5. It's a little bit strange move because then you cannot move your knight anymore on f6. So it's a little bit strange, but I had uh, the option to go rook g6, and I'm not sure why I rejected this one. Okay, probably I thought rook fc1 is coming, and now I've missed this little computer move queen a6, which is which is actually normal to to miss because it's it's a bit strange move. Yes, that's why I didn't play rook g6, and I played g5, which is a little bit strange. I want to keep my rook working on the h file, but I also, I'm also weakening the f5 square. And on the other hand, g5 is also giving space to my king, so he'll go to g7. It's not a bad move, but it's a risky one, of course. Rook fc1, king g7. He played rook c6. Now I went queen d7. And, well, Black's position looks pretty good, actually. He went queen f5. Well, why he played rook c6 and queen f5? Well, first, he blocked this diagonal. And now that I switched my queen to d7, then he wants to pin my knight on e6 and to stop the, the attack. And actually, if he manages to change queens, then I'm lost, because he has a material advantage, and this weak pawn on a7 will suffer a lot. Here I played rook g6. It's a bit uh, weird move, but I have some interesting ideas. I could have played just take on g3, and after taking fg3, for example, to play d4, bishop g5, knight g5, queen g5, rook g6, and black has a big initiative, and it's it's really hard for, for white to stop these sacrifices, and this, actually, this attack with queen h3 also, and maybe the best move is even rook d6, but this is a big advantage for, for black. So, this is what I'm telling you. This is the important lesson of this game. In the previous moves, I have spent a long, long time deciding what to do, 
in a normal position where I have three good options. And here, I have to blitz my moves because I don't have much more time. And I'm missing very, very good possibilities. I'm missing easy possibilities like this. For example, taking on g3, you need to calculate a little bit, but it's not that hard. Maybe what I have missed also is that after hg3, I have this idea, rook h5, which looks very nice actually, because this move can be coming at any moment, g4, chasing away the, the queen. And it looks just uh, difficult for, for white now, it's a clear advantage. But of course, with three minutes uh, on the clock for ten moves, you have just a few seconds to make your decisions, and then you want to play safe, or at least not to blunder anything, and you don't see some details, and then everything gets complicated. I played rook g6 because I thought at some point I might be able to play something on f4, bishop f4 or knight f4, and take advantage of the king on g1, and on the other hand I'm also threatening d4, because I will have g5 defended now. That's why he played d3, so he can escape now after d4 and play bishop d2. Maybe d4 wasn't the best move, but, well, it was the idea already. Bishop d2, now I go queen e7, which is very interesting move. I want to escape from the change of queens, and that's why I play queen e7, because now I can move my knight freely, I can sometimes jump to f4 or something, and he will not be changing on d7. Now he played a4, and this this position is another one which is very interesting. I'm not really sure why I just didn't take on b4. It looks like a very simple move to me. It looks like a very simple move. Just, you grab this pawn, and you have this super strong knight, very well defended. Of course, you need to calculate this sacrifice a little bit with rook e6 take take but it looks like black of course can hold this position something like king h6 and and it's not mate you black, white has some compensation but obviously black is better so bishop b4 is an obvious move once more i just go into something sharp uh, without calculating and just with a with very few time, but at least he had also short time on his clock. So I went knight f4. Very interesting move, actually. Now I'm threatening to go knight e2, so he has to do something about it. Allowing knight e2 is not human, but uh, gf4 is super dangerous, actually. So he could have played something like rook b1. But it, this is just non-human. This is really non-human. Allowing queen e2, knight e2, whatever. So he went gf4. And my idea was to play queen e2. And I was pretty pretty happy about this position because it, it looks just like, uh, well, gf4 is coming and then the queen is also coming to f3 and the king on g1 is so weak. So it looks really, really very good for black, and in fact it is very good. His best option was maybe to just give the queen with rook d6, gf4, queen g6 check, king g6, but okay, black, black is almost winning here, because his king is still weak. Let's say bishop f4, and there are moves like h3, and now this queen f3, queen g2 ideas are super strong also. So his position is just bad. He played fg5. I mean, maybe it's the best move, but it's it's hard to say because both moves are, are losing. Okay, I took queen d2. And he goes king h1. And in this position we have a minute each or something. And I couldn't just realize that this simple move is just super strong. Just knight h5. You don't need to hurry with black to take the pawn on g5. You'll take it whenever it comes. But right now, just go away with the knight and organize your pieces a little bit. And everything is hanging. g5 is hanging. b4 is hanging. 
this knight on h5 can come to f4 sometimes, and then f2 will be hanging too, and everything looks just very strong for for black. The problem is with few seconds you can easily you can easily miss, and actually I could have I could say that it's not that I missed it, but somehow I couldn't believe my eyes because this rook g5 looked so strong. My opponent goes now rook g1. It's, it's the only move because I'm threatening the queen and there is no defense. Let's say he goes queen f3, I go knight g4 and everything is just losing for white here. I'm threatening, uh, threatening knight f2 and, well, everything. So he went rook g1. And again, I was happy with this move, knight g4, I thought it's so smart. And he blitzed out, actually, a move that I have seen just maybe one move ago or here. Before he played it, I have seen it, but I was like, I couldn't believe my eyes. Like, wow, this move is saving. Because this now looks like I'm just winning immediately. I'm attacking his queen and attacking his pawn on f2. But he found a really beautiful move. And he had just seconds on his clock. He found this move rook c2, which is really beautiful because um, now he's attacking my queen. And as we said before, I don't want to change queens because then my attack will be over. And now my king is in a very compromised situation as well. So basically, I couldn't believe my eyes, but suddenly I'm almost lost. And this guy, his Matulin, is the kind of player that uh, he's capable of finding very beautiful resources. He has very nice games, like uh, attacking games and uh, complex positions. And he found here he, with few seconds. But it, it, I mean, he found this move because uh, basically I didn't take my opportunities. I missed, for example, this move 35, knight h5, with a very simple position, very big advantage. He has no plan here. There is no tricks, rook d6 and queen e5 check, because the c1 rook is hanging. So basically, there is not much to calculate. Let's see how the game finished, because it was fast. Okay, so I went knight g4, rook c2. Now there is no move, basically. If I take on f5, he will just take the queen, and he he's spinning my knight, and this is very bad. So he, I went queen f4, he takes, takes, and now he could have maybe played something else, but b5 looks good enough. I still move 39. I have a few seconds left. I have to make a very tough decision here because I am pinned, and he, was, he wants just to change these rooks at some point and run with this extra pawn with a5 and b6. Well, I played king f6, and now he went a5 in, on move 40, and once more he gave me the chance to save the game, probably. If he would have gone something like f3, probably my position is just completely lost. Let's say I go knight e5, rook g5, king g5, a5, and this looks just very, very hard to stop, this b6, a6, ads are just super strong. But instead of that, he went a5 immediately, and now, well, once more I had seconds and I decided really bad, but I could have played an amazing idea here. This this could have been incredible to play to find this move, but I'm pretty sure I could have tried at least to to find it if, if I'll be a little bit inspired, but the, the idea is really beautiful. It's go h3 trapping the king on the side, and now when he goes b6, which looks just uh, very difficult for me to escape from this defense of the pawn, I'm pinned with the rook, I don't want to change rooks, and there is no way to stop this pawn, it looks like. And also if I go a b6, the problem is that uh, very often he'll just go a6, and now my bishop on f4 will be not controlling the promoting square anymore. But here I have an amazing move. B6 I have 
rook c5, which is just a, an amazing move that you cannot find with a few seconds on the clock. And now, well, the, the basic idea is that if you take on c5, of course, now there is knight f2 mate. If you move your rook away, let's say rook b2, then you have time to protect your knight on g4, and after ba7, you have rook a5, and everything is under control. So this was just really beautiful, really beautiful idea, amazing idea. But move 40, and, uh, sadly, actually, because otherwise I could have the opportunity to find the move. But I, I played bishop h2 on move 40, and now basically he has time to think, and it's, it's a very, very bad position for me. It's basically lost. He plays rook g4, rook g4, king h2. And his pawns on the queen side are just too strong. He has the rook in the better square. It will it will go to b2 probably very soon. And this pawn is just too strong. His king will go against his h pawn. So basically, this is almost over. We can go through the rest of the game, but it's uh, it's basically over. Yeah. Okay. Play rook g5, rook b2, rook g8 now. He plays rook b4. He he doesn't have just one move winning, so he has a few different moves. King e5, b6, take, take. The problem with this pawn, when it's so advanced, is that you need both pieces to go there, the rook and the king. And in the meanwhile, he'll bring his king and he'll get a winning position. I've played f5, b7, rook b8, king g2. Well, my little idea was that after king h3, I could go king f4, and I'll stop I'll stop him from, from taking on h4, but it doesn't really mean that I'll have chances to save the game here, but at least little trick. But he played king g2, which is good enough. King d5, and now king h3, and I don't have this idea of playing king f4 anymore. I went back, he took king f4, king h5, okay, this is just completely hopeless, but probably I was just so disappointed that I decided to continue playing, but he doesn't need even to calculate, because his rook on b2 protects everything. I went my rook, I gave my rook on b7, and well, this is just, this is just winning very, very easy. King f4, king e2, check, king d3, rook f3, and king f3. King c3, and, well, basically this is over. So, well, very, very in in intense game, actually, very interesting. What we can learn from this is that uh, once you master the ideas of some opening, try to learn few moves, at least the, the first few moves by memory, so you can blitz few moves, and you can save some energy for for the rest of the game, and save also some time and be practical be pr being practical is one of the main goals of a chess player being practical means that you have time when you need it and don't don't ask yourself too many philosophical questions during the game like what is this is more subtle or this other is more subtle okay a little bit is okay but you need to have a balance in this uh, philosophical questions and and very subtle questions. I mean, like, uh, most games are not decided because of these subtleties, are decided because someone blundered something. So you need to actually basically avoid these blunders, and then after that you can go for the rest. But first of all, avoid the blunders, avoid, avoid the time travels, and go for for the practical chances most of the time. Okay, thanks for watching.